Hello guys, on this video I'm going to create a 3D design using Cinema 4D and Photoshop. First I'm going to design a costume lettering in Procreate with two words. The first word will be edited in Photoshop and the second in Cinema 4D. By the way, the brushes I'm using in Procreate are available through the link on the description. I will also use Illustrator for some bits, but most of the process is on Cinema and Photoshop. Ok, now I'm going to create a new document on Illustrator, 1080 by 720 I will add the lettering, scale it down by holding the Shift and the Option or Alt key. And now I'm going to start with the second word, so I'm going to reduce the opacity. I'm going to lock this layer. I will create a new one. Now I'm going to create some paths for the word pig. Because what we will need to import on Cinema 4D are only the paths. So I'm going to take the pen tool and I will start creating the shape of the letters. I will remove the field. For the dots, I'm going to take the shape tool and create two circles. I will fill those with black and I will increase the size of the stroke to see how it looks. I will change the cups and the corners and now I can edit the path to look smoother. So now I'm going to delete the other layers and I will leave only the stroke of the word big. So now you don't actually see it but there is only the paths. So I'm going to save it by clicking file, save as. I'm going to save it as Illustrator 8 file. I don't know why, but this is how it works with Cinema 4D. Now we're going to Cinema and we're going to add the Illustrator file by going to File, Merge Project. We select the file and we click Open. We make sure to have the connect spines ticked and the scale to 1 cm. Here are the paths, we're going to select them by clicking here and we're going to move them to the center of the workspace. Imagine that the center is here. I'm going to expand the group and move all the paths outside of the group and now I can delete it. Now we click and hold the extrude tool and we select sweep. Then we're going to click and hold the spine pen tool and we click the circle. The circle will be the width of the stroke so at the moment it is actually very big and we're going to adjust the size by changing the radius here. So I'm going to change it to 1 cm. And you can see it here. So I need to move the sweep at the top with the arrow pointing to the left. Then we need to put the circle under the sweep but with the arrow pointing down like that. And now we're going to move the first path under the circle but with the arrow pointing to the left. Now because we need to change the caps of the stroke we're going to select the sweep and I'm going to caps and I'm going to change the size to something like 20. We can zoom in to see how it looks. 
we can also change the segments to make it look smoother like this zoom out by the way in order to move around you can use these three icons each one has different direction or you can click and hold the buttons one two or three so it's one two three so i'm clicking hold one and move the mouse so now i need to add the sweep to all of the paths and i'm going to move the first path outside again and I will duplicate the sweep, including the circle. So I'm copying by clicking Command or Control C, and I'm pasting with Command or Control V. As long as I have six paths, I will create six sweeps. So now I'm going to take the first path again, and I will move it to the first sweep under the circle with the arrow pointing to the left. And I will do the same with the other paths. I will create the circles in a different way, so I'm going to delete the last two sweeps. Now we need to add the anchor points of the paths in order to give some depth on the letters. I make sure that I have selected the points tool as well as the move tool and I'm going to select the sweep and make the letters a bit transparent so I can see the path. So with the sweep selected I'm going to click on basic and then x-ray. So now we can see the path. I will do the same with the other sweeps. And now we need to edit the anchor points. So we can have some lines in front of each other. We can also see the design on multiple views which will be easier to handle the anchor points. We need to have the path selected. Now we can see the points. We can either edit the path like that or move it on the space. Now we need to add two spheres for the two dots. So we're going to this icon, we click and hold, and then we select sphere. Now I need to go and edit the size, so I'm going to object, and I set the radius to one as it was the width of the stroke. So here's the sphere. I will move it to its position. And I will duplicate it by copy and paste and move the new one on top of the eye. Now we can delete the two paths for the circles. Now I would like to add the floor because it will reflect the light on the letters. So I'm going to this icon here, I click and hold and click floor. Now we need to add the materials on the letters and the floor. So the materials are how the objects look like regarding the colors, the reflections, the textures, etc. I'm going to create a new material for the floor, so I double click on the empty space here and then I double click on the new material. Here you can edit all the settings for the appearance of the material, but now I'm going to change only the color and I will go deeper on these settings in another video. So in order to change the color, we're going to color and then we can select whatever we like. I'm going to select something like a purple, blue purple. I'm going to increase the saturation. I click X and then I'm going to add this material to the floor. So I click and drag 
material in the floor. I have also another material which I created earlier and I can add this to the letters. So I click and drag on each of the sweeps. Also on the spheres. If I go to render view, I can have a look on how it looks. I would like to hide the floor but I don't want to delete it because I need the reflectance. So I can do that by going to floor, right click, go to render tags and compositing. Then we can remove the scene by camera. So what that means is when I go to render view, we see only the letters. Now I'm going to add some lights by going to this light here and I select the first one, the first light. I will move it somewhere which will create more signs and better shadows. So now if I render it, I can see that there are some signs from this side because the light is supposed to be here. Also here you can see the reflections of the purple floor but you can't see actually the floor. I can also edit the shadows of the light. I can change the color but I will just leave it as it is, maybe not totally black. And I will duplicate the light by copy and paste and we'll move the new light on the other side but on the back because I want to produce some signs here Now I need to export it, so I'm going to render settings. I will change the size to 3000, the resolution to 150. I'm going to save. I will choose the alpha channel. I will select multipass. I will set this to best. I will add the ambient conclusion. So now that we have set the settings, the render process depends if you're using the Cinema 4D Lite or the full version. For Lite, you need to export it through After Effects, and for the full version, you can export it directly through Cinema 4D. Either way, we'll need some time to render, so I will skip this part and we'll continue the process in Photoshop. Now that we have exported the design and we have opened it in Photoshop, we can add a background. So I'm adding a new layer. I will select the whole area by pressing Ctrl or Command A. I will take the rectangular marquee tool. I right click and I will fill it with a color, probably a dark blue. I will move it on the back. And now I'm going to add the first word. So I will open the file from Procreate. I will select the first word I copy it by pressing command or control C and I am pasting it by clicking command or control V I'm going to change the color to white so I right click I'm clicking blending options color overlay and change it to white I will move it on the back I can rasterize the layer style by right clicking and rasterize layer style now I'm going to draw some shadows on the top word so I create a new layer I make it a clipping mask by, cl by holding Option or Alt key. When I see this arrow, I click. So now it's a clipping mask. Then I'm taking the pen tool by pressing the letter P. I will also zoom in. 
and with the pen tool I will create a path so I can select a specific area where I would like to draw the shadow. Now that I created the path I right click, make selection, ok. Now I'm taking the brush tool by pressing the letter B. I right click to adjust the settings of the brush. So I need a soft brush, medium size and color black. I'm also using a pen tablet so I have pressure sensitivity and I will set the opacity to 42%. So now I can draw like this part of the letter makes some shadow on the rest of it. I will continue drawing shadows on the rest of the letters. Now I will add some extra shadows and highlights on the, on the word big to make it stand out more. I will do that by creating clipping masks, one for the shadows and one for the highlights. Now I will add some color details on the top word based on these colors like they are reflecting. Now I need to add some details around the design also with the brush tool as well as with the pen tool. Now I am adding some adjustment layers to increase the contrast and the brightness. So that was it, if you have any questions let me know in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video like, share and subscribe.